Hi, welcome to the channel. Let's talk about the Lady Dior bag. I've never thought of myself as a feminine person, which is why I have the Swanky and Sweats channel where I talk about dressing down my bags. I don't like the idea of dressing them up. And for the longest time, I thought that I would never add a Lady Dior to my collection because it's just so, it's so feminine. It's a beautiful bag. It's like, in my mind, it's one of the top three most feminine bags that you could own. And that's, that's just not me. Um, I don't know what happened this year. I got a promotion in March and I was really excited to get that promotion. So once the news came out, I really wanted to treat myself. But given how crazy and out of touch Chanel is with their price increases, I figured it's time to turn to another fashion house. And while browsing on Dior's website, I just could not get this color out of my head day after day. And I am talking about the cloud blue color. And I don't know why this color jumped out to me. And I don't know why I, I suddenly became drawn to the Lady Dior style, but I'm so glad to add this back to my collection. This bag itself has a lot of controversies, right? I think if you are researching this bag, you probably know everything I'm going to hit, including the fact that this bag has terrible resale value. I do not understand why, but every time I see these bags listed on a fashion file, a lot of the times they're they're going for like, I don't know, 20% below retail, bags that are practically brand new. And one thing I do take comfort in is the fact that I rarely see the cloud blue color on the pre-love sites, which, you know, to me is an indication that this is something that people tend to hold on to, hopefully. The second thing that's pretty controversial about this bag, I think, is I've, like many of you, watched so many reviews on this bag from so many YouTubers out there, and I think that people tend to either love it or hate it. So you either see someone with five different Lady Dior's, or you see them with like just the one and they're planning to sell it and they're telling you why so i think it's a very particular bag and i'm not sure what switch went off in my head that was like oh this is a good year to invest in this bag and i, I bought right after the price increase too so great great job brain as i mentioned i am not a very feminine dresser i like to wear things that are oversized i like to wear things that are casual when i see this bag i picture someone who's in a floral dress like a wrap dress or like a maxi dress and they're very feminine and i am very much not that and i think that's why i picked this color i've seen so many reviews Reviews on the pink blush color and I think personally I think it's the same shade but in a different color if you see what I'm saying like I think it's the same saturation but that one is a nude pink this is a blue so I think they're complementary colors but for me given the bag itself is already so feminine I wanted something that's more mas masculine so this is why I ended up with blue and one thing I do it's it's getting heavy so I'm gonna switch my my hands so one thing that I do before I go on purchasing more bigger ticket items is I really like to try out the colors by buying cheaper bags. So for the longest time, my favorite bag was this Rebecca Minkoff box bag that I got from a sample sale. And it's this bright orange color. I use that bag for such a long time. And every time I wear it, I get compliments. I know that whenever I look for a bright color bag in any luxury houses, I like the bright orange because I know it works with my outfits. Similar to that, I also have a blue bag from Old Navy. I think it's it was probably twenty to thirty dollars, and it's in the shade of uh, like a dark denim and gray. So I think it's kind of like this color. It's a nice neutral but it also went with so many different outfits. Now, obviously I didn't really worry about color transfer with that bag because the color was darker and it's not leather. It was like a suede material, but I know that the color works for me. So when I saw this color, I just, like I said, could not stop thinking about it. And I knew immediately that I wanted this color, even though I tried on the gray, which I, I think is an amazing gray that Dior has. If you're someone who's not into gray, I don't like gray bags. I think they're very hard to dress, but the Dior gray is so, it's such a warm, beautiful gray that I was very close to changing my mind, but I was like, no, I know what I want. I should just go for it. So this is how I ended up with her. So this is the newest version of the bag. When I picked the charms, I picked all three with the crystals. Like I wanted to make sure that I had these 
the option of flipping this over to the side without crystals if I wanted to. And normally I'm a very indecisive person, but for some reason with this purchase, I was like, I know this is the color I want. I know these are the charms I want. It took me probably three minutes to pick out these three. I know I didn't want my initials on there. I just think that's, I don't know, like to each their own, but to me, I, I don't like it. But I know that the star has a significant meaning in Dior's history. He was very much into astrology. I wanted this CD logo in particular because I think this is the most iconic, timeless uh, piece of their logo design. And then this heart with an arrow through it was just something that the sales associate showed me. And I was like, yeah, that, that'll do. I will put that on there. And I will say that the based on the videos I've seen, where you can clip on your charms has changed. I've seen bags where the charms are going off on the extended version of this strap. And then I've also seen um, versions of this bag where the charms are just like clip on buttons on a little leather strip. For this version though, I don't know if you can see it, but essentially you're threading the charms through the leather strap, which I kind of like, but as you can see, it also creates this like uneven surface on the strap. I don't know if this will work itself out as I continue to use it, but that is something that I've noticed. The other thing I will say that is really annoying and you've probably seen it in other reviews is the fact that like this bag doesn't balance. And I think if you're not careful, you're putting it down on a table and you didn't sit the handles the right way, it falls over. I hate that. I just hate thinking about anything happening to, to the leather here. And I think I've seen in multiple reviews that commented on the feet of these bags. Like, I don't know, they're like freaking like Patrick Star feet. Like, can we not do something better about these pointy things? Like we couldn't just make them more flat and square so that they stay and they, they provide the support the bag needs. I don't get it. Um, I still love it though. I know I'm picking out the flaws and showing you guys why people are not liking this bag, but this is, a decision that really took me by surprise and I don't hate it one bit. I actually like venturing out there outside my comfort zone. The other thing I wanted to talk about while we're on the cons list is just how hard these straps are to adjust. Like when I bought it, I was like, oh yeah, this is great. These straps are adjustable. Barely. Okay. Like as you can see, like on both ends of the strap, you have three holes that you can choose to put this bolt over to adjust adjust the strap, but it's very minimal adjusting. I think this is probably not even like maybe two inches of adjusting that you can get on both sides. And as someone who's like slightly below average height, I'm 5'3 and a half, 5'4. This is freaking long on me. I can't really wear it as a shoulder bag. I feel ridiculous wearing it as a shoulder bag. I think uh, as a crossbody bag, it's really nice, but it also gives such a messenger bag vibe that I'm not trying to go for with this type of purchase. So I don't know, maybe I'll get used to it, but that is something that was like really annoying me when I was trying to clip it back into like the, on the shortest length. It took me so long and I almost thought I was gonna break the strap when I did that. And I was so afraid of scratching it too. I, I thought there was an easier way, but I think you just have to really be ruthless with it and um, tear your way through these, <laughs> these little buttonholes. I wanted to show you guys what this looks like on me uh, for my frame because I didn't see a lot of mod shots out there for this bag, even though so many people talk about it. So here you go. I keep having to refilm this part because like the double chin's very strong in this segment, but I did want to show you how this bag looks on as a top handle bag. And again, I'm 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, I think I have a shorter torso, like I have a higher, shorter waist, but this is kind of where it would fall. And I think the handle drop is really, healthy height you could probably easily slide in your wrist even with like a couple layers of clothes on so i think that's really nice and i think because of the design even if you carry the bag with a strap i don't think this bag loses the elegance that comes with its heritage so i think that's really nice and i used to think i only liked cross body bags until i got my fendi baguette and i think that really turned me on to top handle bags and I really I really do love them. I think they're very classy, very ladylike, something I'm not, but I'm trying to be more of. <laughs> so now let's see how this fits crossbody and on the shoulder. Here's how it looks as a crossbody. Like I said, big messenger bag vibes. Maybe I'll get used to it, but I just I don't know. It looks kind of awkward, doesn't it? <laughs> 
And lastly, the shoulder bag, which I just, I don't know, it doesn't look too bad on camera, but I can't, I just don't see myself going places like this. Hope that was a helpful first impression review, whatever you want to call it. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this beauty. I had, I cannot recommend this color enough. It's just so gorgeous. And I don't think the camera is doing it justice right now. I will probably insert another video of what fits in this bag when there's a uh, daylight out. Let's quickly talk about what fits inside now that I have the daylight on my side. Uh, this is the Lady Dior in the small side. And as you can see, it has the newer flap opening and the inside is lined with microfiber, similar to the ones that I, my right hand is on here. I kind of prefer the old fabric lining. Um, I just think it looks cleaner and it's probably easier to maintain than this, but I, I do feel like this feels more luxurious. So I did try to fit my full size wallet in there. It does not fit and I don't want to force it. I think there's definitely enough width on the bottom to accommodate it, but since it is a slight curve up, I don't want to risk it. I think the largest thing you could probably get away with is a sunglasses case. So this is the sunglass case I have from the Specs, and this fits there perfectly as you can see. And I think with any other smaller capacity bags, you just want to play Tetris a little bit and see what fits in. So. I know a lot of people carry mini pochettes and they do fit in here if you want to carry yours. But as you can see, it does take up a decent amount of space. I think if you were to carry the sunglasses and the mini pochette, you're probably gonna be using that as a wallet. Um, and then you have some space on the side where you can put in maybe a lip gloss or AirPods or whatnot. Um, and you're just about out of space. I just threw in my um, key pouch in there just to show you how much capacity there is however if you're like me and you don't carry a lot of stuff like I normally only carry this in my tote bag so I would never bring it in a smaller bag like this one I would just put in um, my sunglasses my wallet my key pouch key clay I don't know why people call it key clay it's like clay already means key so essentially you're saying key keys right <laughs> I don't know and sometimes I'll bring my um, portable charger in here I think again just stick it in it's completely fine and then just lip gloss and airpods see that fits everything fits in there very snugly and perfectly and that's about all my daily essentials Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe and like the video. I would really, really, really appreciate it. Bye.